Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and how are you doing today? I hope things are well with you as always. So I would like to take this opportunity, if I may, to talk to you about the recent announcement that the Criterion Collection made with respect to its planned releases for March 2020. Okay, so before I continue, I'd like to say that, as some of you may know, I usually do this with my computer or my iPad, and just showing the images as they appear on the iPad. So it's not so uh, high-tech or anything like that, and I sincerely apologize for my poor presentation skills. If you don't mind, I would actually suggest that you take a look at the Criterion Collection website directly. And in fact, if you want, you can uh, look at it maybe as you watch this video, if you have a, a large enough screen, or maybe you can look at it afterwards at your own uh, time and, and pace and leisure, of course. Uh, because the best way to look at, for instance, the images for the cover art designs, as well as the specifics as far as the supplemental materials are concerned, and the specifications for each of the releases, is to look at the Criterion website directly, because that's the information that we are all dealing with. So I recommend that you take a look at the Criterion website directly for more information. So with that out of the way, my friends, let us start with the release that is planned for March 10th, 2020. This is Spine 122, and this is the film Salesman. Now, Salesman is a film that has been released by the Criterion Collection already. As you can see, this is the current DVD, which is in the Criterion Collection right now, Spine 122, and as you can see it has the older logo for the front cover of the Criterion Collection release. So this is very interesting, but now what we have is a Blu-ray upgrade with different cover art. Now, the cover art is indicated as being based on the original theatrical poster by Henry Wolfe, and as you can see, it differs from the current DVD release of this from the Criterion Collection. But for those of you who have the DVD or who otherwise know about this, if you open up the DVD inside, you can actually see the, the booklet. And in fact, the booklet features this same artwork that seems to be the basis for the Blu-ray upgrade that is going to take place in March. Uh, 2020. So there's a, a little bit of continuity perhaps with respect to the DVD release versus the upcoming Blu-ray upgrade. I don't know if you've seen this film or already or not, but I, I understand it's already available as this DVD. Also it's available on the Criterion channel, at least according to the website. So if you have not seen this film yet, I strongly urge you to do so. Uh, this is a film by uh, David Maisel's, Albert Maisel's, and Charlotte Zwerin, and it is a, a very vivid and uh, directly shot documentary about a particular aspect of uh, late 20th century American culture and society. And so this is, I think, a very uh, uh, intimate uh, portrait of this kind of lifestyle and this kind of way of living and this kind of means of trying to make it, so to speak, in the world. This is the documentary Salesman. It is actually quite, uh, quite groundbreaking, I think, in a number of ways. 
and I really think it is so worth your time. So uh, there is the DVD. It's also on the Criterion channel currently, I understand. Plus there is, of course, the future upcoming release from the Criterion Collection on Blu-ray. So you have a number of options available to you, but whatever option you select, my friends, I would strongly recommend that you take a look at this very, uh, very memorable work. Uh, this is Salesman. And let's take a look at what the features are. So this is actually a, uh, there's an interesting distinction that's being made between the DVD release and the Blu-ray upgrade. And let's, I'll try to be as careful as I can about this. So the DVD, which is already in the collection, is labeled as being high definition digital transfer. The Blu-ray upgrade is described as being new restored 4K digital transfer. This is with uh, uncompressed monaural soundtrack. The image quality, quality and the sound quality for the DVD release, I think, is quite good. But if we're talking about a new restored 4K digital transfer, which is described as being undertaken by the Academy Film Archive, the Film Foundation, and the George Lucas Family Foundation, this is uh, something to look forward to very much. And so if image quality and sound quality is a concern for you, then this might be a, a good option to take, the Blu-ray upgrade, I mean. And then we have a commentary, which is by uh, directors Albert Mazels and Charlotte Zwerin. And this commentary is actually included already on the DVD release. So we're going to have that same commentary come over to the Blu-ray upgrade, which is a really good commentary track. And then there is a television interview from 1968 with uh, the directors David and Albert Mazels. So this is a... Um, this is from 1968, and the interview is on the DVD and also on the Blu-ray upgrade. So that's also good news. And then there is an, let's see, there's an audio excerpt from a uh, 2000 episode of NPR's Weekend Edition profiling James Baker, one of the salesmen featured in the film. And this is on the DVD, and also it's going to be on the Blu-ray upgrade. So that's really good. Okay. So here's where we are going to find some differences. So the first difference is the Blu-ray upgrade will include a, a new appreciation of the film by actor Bill Hader. And so this Bill Hader appreciation supplement is not found on the current DVD. So this is going to be something new for the Blu-ray upgrade only. Also only for the Blu-ray, we have Globesman a 2016 episode of the television series Documentary Now that parodies the film that stars Hader and Fred uh, Armisen. So I haven't seen Globesman, so this will be something that is new for me, and I'm looking forward to that very much. I know Bill Hader, of course, and I, I think he's a very um, he's very wonderful, and he's of course also known for being uh, a fan of the Criterion Collection. So it'll be good to see those two features, uh, two supplemental features for the Blu-ray only. Again, they're not on the current DVD. Then we have something interesting. Um, well, the DVD has a behind-the-scenes photograph section which is not going to be carried over to the Blu-ray, at least according to the, the site, the Criterion site. So that's a feature that is found only on the Criterion DVD, but it's not going to be on the Blu-ray. So there's something to keep in mind. Also, please note that the booklet for the DVD includes an essay written by Toby Miller. It's a, it's a short but a very good essay. The Blu-ray description on the site indicates an essay by critic Michael Chaikin on the Blu-ray. So the Blu-ray, it seems, will include a different essay written by a different person. Now it's unclear to me if the Blu-ray booklet will also include the current DVD booklet essay by Toby Miller or not. It's not clear to me. Maybe not. I'm not sure, but we'll have to take uh, keep an eye out for that when this is released. But 
In any event, my friends, we have differences in, in the booklet essay and also some differences in the supplemental features that are made on the Blu-ray versus that are currently available on the DVD. So please keep this in mind when you are considering which format to get. Um, and I think, let's see, I just want to be sure I have everything. Uh, and then there is a trailer, uh, which is found also on the DVD. So the trailer can be found on the DVD, and then also it's going to be included as one of the supplemental features for the Blu-ray upgrade. So there are some differences uh, to keep in mind, but I think this is... Um, this is really up to you, and I think for those of you for whom the potential for the high quality that the uh, new 4K digital transfer will uh, uh, possibly bring might be a great incentive to opt for the Blu-ray upgrade, which will be coming in March uh, 2020. Uh, if not, then there are some really good uh, supplemental features on this DVD release, which I, as I said, I think is a very good presentation of this very memorable and in many ways quite important work. So this is the film Salesman. Next, this is scheduled for release March 17th, 2020. This is for Spine 1019. This is from the year 2000. The director is Spike Lee. The name of the film is Bamboozled. This is one of those really remarkable works. I think it comes in, the, in a period of Spike Lee's career where I think he was doing a lot of uh, interesting, almost experimental works. Now, that's not to say that his early works weren't experimental. I think, on the contrary, he was always dealing with, uh, in many respects, some cutting-edge uh, narrative tricks and also some really uh, interesting flourishes of visual style and the like, all the way back from his early works. I think Bamboozled is a continuation of that kind of approach or exploration or evolution, if you will, of a kind of artistic, uh, of an artistic and visual approach to the cinematic craft. And we are dealing with a very interesting medium uh, that Spike Lee is dealing with and working with in order to tell his story. And oh gosh, what a story this is. This is a... Uh, it's described as being a kind of satire film. It is, uh, in many ways, a very bold, in-your-face, challenging work that is uh, of a of a tone and style and of a, a kind of flavor that only Spike Lee's cinema can bring. There is a, a rough energy, I think, to this. And I mean that very positively. Uh, and I say rough because I don't mean rough in terms of rough around the edges. I mean really a kind of rough and tumble, almost no holds barred type of approach to its subject matter. And if you haven't seen this film, there is a lot of, uh, there, there is a lot of shocking sub subject matter, I would say. But it's all handled very deftly, very cleverly, and quite keenly and intelligently by everyone concerned. So this, uh, and I think also, you know, I, I've read uh, a number of comments uh, somewhere that perhaps this might be seen as uh, maybe not a major work from Spike Lee. And I completely understand that. I, I see where this falls potentially in the entire Spike Lee canon. I wouldn't call myself a Spike Lee filmography expert, but I am a great admirer of his works, and I've tried to see uh, as many of his works as I can. I consider Bamboozled to be a, a kind of uh, of a, an awesome work. It is. It really is quite an awesome achievement. And where it goes, and the kinds of choices that it makes, and the kinds of conclusions that it reaches with respect to its subject matter, 
I think might turn off some. It would, uh, it might challenge others, and it will definitely provoke, and it will definitely, what's the phrase, make one think. Uh, and there are uh, many kinds of direct responses that I have to this film uh, you know, that, that makes me, I think this is a great thing, it makes me sometimes feel a little bit guilty in certain respects. It also makes me laugh, it also uh, disgusts me, and almost even to an, a certain ex extent almost horrifies me. Uh, but I think all of this is is all positive praise because this is exactly what uh, good cinema should do. It should really provoke and make one think, and this film certainly does, in my opinion. Uh, there have been many comparisons made to uh, films such as, for instance, Network. Um, but I think, I, and I think the comparisons are there. Uh, but I think the film is actually uh, so much more than that comparison. Um, as great as that comparison is, and as great as that other film is, I think this film, Bamboozled, is trying something that is uh, directly in one's face, and uh, it, it is uh, wholly and completely provocative in a way that uh, is so great about the cinema of Spike Lee. So this is uh, one that I'm very much looking forward to. So this is Bamboozled, which is again scheduled for release March 17th, 2020. I cannot wait for this. And one of the reasons why I can't is because <clears throat> the special edition features as listed here, director approved, uh, indicate a new 2K digital restoration uh, which should be very interesting with 5.1 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray. So uh, very, th this is interesting. You know, I, I'm, I, I don't know of this new 2K digital restoration, and I'm sure it's going to be high quality. I know some of you maybe know the film already, and the way it was shot, I think uh, there is a kind of... Uh, uh, how should I put it? In in a in very simplistic terms, there is a kind of low grade quality about the way that the film is actually shot, and I think that's done on purpose as an artistic choice on the part of the filmmakers. So it will be interesting to see how the effects of modern day 2K digital restoration work will have on this particular work. I think the effects will be very positive, but this will be very interesting for me to see. Uh, but in any case, this is very uh, intriguing and most exciting. Then there is an audio commentary from 2001 featuring Lee. So again, this is, uh, this is from uh, almost 20 years ago. And then there is a new conversation between uh, director Lee and film programmer and critic Ashley Clark. Then there are new interviews with choreographer and actor Savion Glover and actor Tommy Davidson and costume designer Ruth E. Carter. So Savion Glover and Tommy Davidson appear in the film in very key roles, so it'll be great to hear their take on this, as well as the costume design. This is going to be really interesting. There, there are some interesting... Uh, I'm saying interesting a lot, but there are some intriguing choices regarding uh, some of the costume uh, work here. So this, uh, these interviews, I think, are going to be so worthwhile. Then there is a, a, a new interview program featuring film and media scholar Raquel Gates, which is called On Blackface and the Minstrel Show. Now, if we can uh, get anything from the title of this, I think we can uh, see that perhaps this particular interview will be dealing with one of the the aspects of this film, namely the aspect of the minstrel, uh, the, the use of the minstrel, uh, uh, the, the, the use of that in the narrative story here with the, uh, the programming and, and the television and, and all that, and, and how that becomes a part of a kind of commentary, if you will, on, on, uh, on the media. So this is a very good, you know, there have been a number of other titles released by the Criterion Collection where uh, the Criterion Collection, I think, to its credit, have tried to uh, discuss or at least uh, touch upon the is issue of, of a minstrelsy 
or um, uh, blackface in certain films that are in the Criterion Collection. Uh, for examples being Othello, uh, the Orson Welles work Othello. Also, a more recent example being Swing Time. And in fact, there is going to be another example that we can talk about uh, in this current batch of releases for March 2020 later in this video. Uh, that is dealing uh, in, in one aspect with this issue of blackface. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm, this is actually uh, something that we should all uh, uh, take a look at when this is released, because I think uh, this particular point about this in regards to this film is really one of the, the most... Um, I should I put it, the most me memorable parts of this particular work by Spike Lee. And so this is going to be uh, something that I think uh, I certainly will be looking forward to. And then there is a 2001 documentary called The Making of Bamboozled. And then there are deleted scenes, uh, music videos, and alternate parody commercials created for the film, and then poster gallery and trailer, and then an essay by the aforementioned Ashley Clark. And I should say that the cover art here is based on the original theatrical poster, and I remember this poster. I actually saw this when it was uh, released uh, initially, and so uh, this was a very uh, uh, interesting look uh, that was given to the promotional materials of the film. So I'm glad this has been carried over uh, to the Criterion release. So ultimately, my friends, this is, I think, one to... to uh, this is one to, to get. And as I say, there's another release later this month called Showboat. It's, I think, a very... Uh, and I mean this in a very good way. This is a very peculiar combination of films, in particular to combine Bamboozled and the film Showboat in the same month, I think, uh, I'm not sure if there is any anything behind that on purpose from the Criterion Collection, but at the very least, that combination of those films is very provocative. And uh, that that's a really great thing. And uh, that is one of the reasons why I think this release from the Criterion Collection is going to be one to look out for. I'm looking forward to this immensely. So this is the film for Spike 1019. The film is Bamboozled. Next, this is scheduled for release March 24th, 2020. This is Spy Number 1020 from 1945. The director is John, uh, John M. Stahl, excuse me. And the film is Leave Her to Heaven, starring uh, the great Gene Tierney in one of those unbelievable performances. I don't know if you've seen this film yet. If you haven't seen this film, I don't want to spoil it for you. Uh, so I don't know how to describe it. I'll, I'll try to be as, as, as vague as possible. The performance here is uh, magnificent in the context of its scope and its reach and all the places that it goes. And that, that goes also for the story too. This is a story that really is, is uh, I think, in terms of its, uh, in terms of its distance, it, it's a story that I would say goes the distance in quite a number of significant ways. And uh, there are many turns and a lot of insights and there are some clever touches in terms of visual storytelling. And it's a very compelling, oftentimes uh, shocking work. So this is the film, Leave Her to Heaven. And I am, uh, I'm actually quite thrilled that the Criterion Collection is uh, is releasing this. Um, there are some issues with the supplemental material, perhaps, and we'll get to that in a second. But to have this film itself in the Criterion Collection, I think, is is a great great thing. With some really uh, breathtaking cover art here. Look at that. That is amazing. Uh, this is uh, Gene Tierney as the character of Ellen. What a character Ellen is, and she is. I don't want to give away too much, but there is a, a, a lake in the background, and she's wearing sunglasses. And this is actually one of the 
I, I understand this to be a depiction of actually one of the key scenes in the film, one of the key moments of this film. And so, and those sunglasses, man, yeah, that's, uh, that's something else. Um, so th this is, I think, very apropos, and also the, the artistic depiction here is utterly splendid. Um, with uh, This is credited as being new cover illustration by Flore Maquin. So well done, well done indeed. And this is also described as being um, restored by 20th Century Fox and the Academy Film Archive with support from the Film Foundation. And in fact, the special features indicate this as being new 2K digital restoration by 20th Century Fox, the Academy Film Archive, and the Film Foundation with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray. So I don't know what the direct history is of the, the restoration history is of this particular work. So I really can't, can't speak to that, uh, unfortunately. But it does say new, and so if... Uh, th this, if this is a new restoration, then this will be a very intriguing release indeed to have. And then I should say that the special features next indicate new interview with critic Imogen Sarah Smith, and then a trailer, and then an essay by novelist Megan Abbott. And that's it as far as the special features are concerned. There's no indication of a more exclamation point. So what can we make of this? So as far as the quantity of special features are concerned, we can say that relatively speaking, the quantity is maybe relatively small. Who knows what will happen between now and March 24th, 2020. It's very possible that Criterion might decide to add more supplements, who knows. There doesn't seem to be any indication on the website right now of that happening, but who knows. Let's keep an eye out for that between now and March. But we should talk about this because I think this is quite, uh, quite a significant thing. You know, this film, I don't know if you know this, uh, maybe you already know this, those of you in particular who are uh, fans of the label Twilight Time, you will probably know that this film had been released on a on a limited edition release that is, uh, I understand now, out of print. And there were a number of of supplemental features there which don't appear to be carried over to this Criterion Collection release, unfortunately, um, including a, a really nice audio commentary, which unfortunately doesn't appear to be part of this Criterion release. So. I think on the one hand, that might be seen by some as being somewhat disappointing. And uh, I certainly understand if one has that uh, view. And that probably means that for those of us who have the Twilight Time release from earlier, it might be a good thing to keep that or to hold on to that um, for the time being at least. For those of us who don't have the Twilight Time release and are interested in this particular film. Uh, this is, I think, a very good opportunity to get it. I should say that uh, an essay, essays by Megan Abbott are always welcome. Um, I should also say that the, uh, the critic, the film critic Imogen Sarah Smith is one of my favorites. I, I think her interviews and her takes and her insights are so brilliant and so uh, on point every time. And what is more, she has a very easy to listen to approach and speaking style. Her presentation of her points when she's being interviewed is really uh, uh, such a it, it's it's such a great thing to listen to for me as a kind of a student or a, a, a an observer or the or the purchaser of the, the Blu-ray, if you will. I should note, for instance, uh, maybe you might have uh, been able to catch, for instance, an interview that Imogen Sarah Smith had done for one of the supplemental features for the recent release of The Story of Temple Drake. If so, I think you'll know what, exactly what I'm talking about. And so if that is any indication, then I think we can expect something really, really great and insightful to come from 
uh, this interview that's planned to be released for the Leave Her to Heaven Criterion release in March. Uh, so that's really great. At the same time, of course, and this is nothing against the great image in Sarah Smith, but at the same time, of course, I do understand the potential criticism uh, out there about how this might seem to be a quote-unquote bare-bones release. Um, again, let's see what happens between now and March. If indeed this is going to be the actual presentation of supplements for the actual final release, then perhaps, yes, that criticism might be valid. But let us keep an eye also on the quality of the film presentation itself. Let us also, once again, um, keep an eye on what this interview will have to offer as well as the essay. And so, uh, right, uh, it's one of those things uh, that we see often in life, you know, quality versus quantity. And we shall see with respect to the quality when the release is actually made in March. So this is something that we should look forward to and keep an eye out for when uh, this does happen. But uh, let us uh, remain as um, as optimistic as possible, shall we say, about this. But uh, in any event, my friends, this is the film scheduled for Spine 1020. This is Leave Her to Heaven. Next, scheduled for release March 24th, 2020, Spine 146, which is already currently in the collection as a DVD. This is the work from 1957. The filmmaker is Mikhail Kalatozov. The film is The Cranes Are Flying. Now, what I have in my hands here is the current DVD release. As you can see, it is an older, earlier release, as we can tell from the 146 spine number and also the line logo across the top there. This does not have any special features or supplemental materials, but the film itself is one of those great gems. It is a kind of allegorical film. It is also a kind of tragic film in a way in terms of its story and narrative focus. And it is also very lyrical, quite poetic. And some of the shots, many of the shots are so beautifully staged and framed as to create this this impeccable balance between its visual presentation and then its narrative content if you know what i mean and this is and it, at, at its heart is a is a, a prime and uh, humanely crafted uh, story uh, that has such universal appeal that makes this film <laughs> incredibly moving incredibly moving so this is the cranes are flying and it's wonderful again to see this being upgraded because as I say this was an earlier DVD and the DVD itself while excellent the presentation of the film itself is excellent we don't have any real uh, special features or supplemental materials to speak of here. Um, so to have this upgraded like we will in March is something to celebrate because hopefully this means that many people will be able to, to watch it or at least uh, consider watching it. As I say, you can also watch it now on the Criterion channel if you have the opportunity. Um, but what we have here for the upgrade is new 2K digital restoration with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Once again, the DVD I think is really quite good, but if we have a new 2K digital restoration, or what's purported to be new, then that is something that we should look forward to for March. Uh, so let's keep an eye out on this. Then we have a new interview with scholar Ian Christie on why the film is a landmark of Soviet cinema. This is really great too because um, uh, Ian Christie, I think, is a very uh, intelligent and well-spoken uh, film critic and scholar. And so, um, and says a new interview, so it'll be great to hear what it is he has to say. Plus an audio interview from 1961 with director Mikhail Kalatozov. So, once again, this is an interview that I don't know if I've heard. Um, 
there aren't any details about this, but it's nothing that we find on the current DVD, that's for sure. Then there is a documentary from 2009 on uh, the director, and he says here, the, uh, the Georgians director's complex relationship with the Soviet government. And this is called Hurricane Kala Tozov. So this is one, again, I have not seen, so I should uh, make a note of this when this is released. Then there's a segment from a 2008 program about the film's cinematography, uh, featuring original storyboards and an interview with actor Alexei Batalov. So this is important because the film's cinematography is one of its selling points. Not even a selling point. I think that's uh, that's not even giving it enough praise. It's one of the most uh, it's one of the most beautifully poetic shot films. Uh, that is in the Criterion Collection. And so uh, to have this program on the cinematography, I think is very key, very key. Yeah, the cinematography is one of the key elements of this film. You cannot avoid it. it it's, it's stunning, absolutely stunning. Um, then there's an interview from 2001 with filmmaker Claude Lelouch on the film's French premiere at the 1958 Cannes Film Festival. Then there's a new English subtitle translation, plus an essay by critic Chris Fujiwara. And I should say that the essay by Chris Fujiwara is also here on the DVD booklet. So it might be the same essay. Who knows, it might be a different essay, I'm not sure. But in any event, we have already have an essay by Chris Fujiwara, Fujiwara excuse me, for the DVD booklet. But it might be the same essay, it might not, who knows. Um, but there we go. I should say also that the cover design is new. This is a new cover design by Century Studio. And as you can see, it differs from the current DVD cover art. Now, I it's hard to... Actually, I admit it's a little bit hard for me to tell exactly how this will look when we see the finished product after its release. Um, it does have a certain color scheme that I find intriguing, um, but I'll leave it to you as to which you prefer, the older DVD or the proposed new cover art for the, for the Criterion Blu-ray. Uh, but it's uh, quite, I think, it, there are certain actors that are prominent in the, in the cover art, which I think is very appropriate. And it does have a nice uh, aesthetic look. So uh, that is the cover art that is planned for this film. So, my friends, this is, I think, one that we should celebrate very much because this is, in the words of the description of the supplement for the new interview with Ian Christie, this is, I think, uh, very aptly described as being a landmark film. And it's a landmark film that is very, very accessible uh, via its humane touches in terms of its narrative. And so I would strongly, strongly urge that you take a look at this film if you haven't already. I think you will really get a lot out of it. It is uh, unforgettable and so moving and very deep and uh, so uh, lyrical and uh, quite it, it's it's really quite unbelievable in terms of its its visual effect, uh, and it still holds up remarkably. So this is the film, The Cranes Are Flying. Next, this is scheduled for release March 31st, 2020. This is the film from uh, 1936, scheduled for release on Spine 1021. The director is James Whale, and the film is Showboat. And I should let you know that the cover design is by Raphael uh, Gironi. So take a look at that cover art. It's really intriguing. And it's one of the uh, iconic moments in the film uh, featuring Paul Robeson. And in fact, he's there right, uh, right on the cover. Uh, I think uh, rightly so. Uh, because of how iconic this particular moment in the film is. And if you know the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, really, uh, 
really great and appropriate. So we have this film Showboat, which is a musical at which is a film of the musical, which itself was an adaptation of the novel by Edna Ferber. So it's interesting to have the the name appearing at the top there. And this is also significant because in terms of criterion release history, because we did actually see this film released by the Criterion Collection many, many years ago as a Laserdisc. So this is the Laserdisc Spine 44 from way back in the day. And this is a uh, uh, quite a, a nice release of this film. And there are actually some supplements that are significant when we're talking about the planned Blu-ray release of this, and I'll get to that in a second. But uh, So we have a Laserdisc uh, or a film that had been a Laserdisc and now it's going to become a Blu-ray. So Showboat is, in that sense, returning to the Criterion Collection. So uh, that is uh, really wonderful. Now, the film itself is... Um, it is, a, it is a musical and it has many iconic moments in it. And there, is, there are some really charged performances, and it has, a, I think, a, a quite a, uh, an innocent uh, storyline or storylines, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so there is a, a lot of, of elements that I think can appeal to many people if you haven't seen the film. Um, and so it, it's, I think it's a welcome uh, addition to the Criterion Collection. Uh, very welcome indeed. Uh, it's, it's, uh, if you, even if you don't know the film, I'm sure you will know many of the songs that are performed in, in the musical Showboat. So uh, this is going to be uh, very exciting, I think, for many concerned. Before I get to any more specific comments, though, let me just go to the special features. We have what purports to be new restored 4K digital transfer with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray. New restored 4K digital transfer. So this is something to celebrate, and let's take a look at this when it is released. But uh, if this is a new 4K digital transfer, that is something to be looking forward to very much. Then there is an audio commentary from 1989 featuring American musical historian Miles Kruger. And this is significant because, as I mentioned, this had been a Criterion Laserdisc. And in fact, the uh, the commentary is present on the Laserdisc, and so I'm assuming this is going to be the same commentary track that will be used for the upcoming Blu-ray. It's interesting, too, because in the, when this Laserdisc was released, commentary tracks were known as audio essays. And so the audio essay from 1989 is most likely the same audio commentary track that we saw from the Laserdisc, the special edition Laserdisc, anyway. Uh, so... Um, uh, and it's a good commentary track. It's I'm not an expert in uh, 1930s American musicals, so it was something that I learned a lot from. So I would recommend it to anyone who is seeking to know more about this particular period in uh, in film musical history. Then there is a new interview with James Whale biographer James Curtis. So that's great. Then there is a a, a, a supplement here called. Recognizing Race in Showboat, a new interview program featuring professor and author Shauna L. Redmond. I think this is very significant because it is inescapable that uh, with this release of Showboat, in, uh, especially now in the current times, uh, a discussion on how it treats certain aspects of race and racial relations is critical. I, I, I don't think uh, I, I don't think a successful I don't think a release would be successful without some kind of discussion on this topic or these topics. So I'm I think this is one that we should really uh, pay good attention to when this is released. I should note that there is no such discussion or any any kind of supplement like that on the laser disc, and so I think this is an indication of what Criterion is trying to do 
uh, in this, uh, you know, 2019 or 2020, and I think very rightly so, uh, because this is a kind of aspect of of the cinema which I think needs to be addressed in a thoughtful way. So hopefully, this will be uh, a, a, this will be a good way to address this and to get a good discussion about this. I should say also that I mentioned that this film is released in the same month as the Spike Lee film Bamboozled. And so there are actually some there are, there are actually some similarities between or some links I should say between Bamboozled and Showboat that uh, are are um, uh, maybe for lack of a better word somewhat disturbing. And so it'll be really critical to take a listen or to take a, a, a watch as to this new interview program about recognizing race in showboat. Um, I, this is one that I think is, is really important and hopefully it'll present a really nice conversation and discussion. I, actually, I, I'm, I would assume uh, given Criterion's um, track record, I think it'll, it will do just that. And then there's Paul Robeson, Tribute to an Artist, 1979, an Academy Award-winning short documentary by uh, Saul J. Terrell, newly restored, which is great. Then there are two performances from the sound prologue of the 1925 film version of Showboat, plus 20 minutes of silent excerpts from the film with audio commentary by Kruger. And then there are two radio adaptations of Showboat, plus an essay by critic Gary Giddens. So... Once again, we have a film that I think is a very uh, pleasant watch. It has some moments that are undeniably iconic. It is uh, a film that's coming from a rich musical tradition and heritage, uh, undoubtedly. There are also aspects of this film that I think might seem a little bit uncomfortable to watch today, which is the reason why it is important to remember this particular interview program called Recognizing Race in Showboat, and hopefully that will help to address these certain uh, potential issues that uh, exist with this film. Uh, but uh, once that those issues, I think, are recognized and are at least on the table for discussion, uh, that's not in any way, hopefully, to deny the other elements of this film showboat which I think are quite delightful so and plus we have once again Criterion Laserdisc that is resurrected back into the collection as it were so that's also something to celebrate so my friends this is Spine 1021 this is the film showboat last but certainly not least this is scheduled for release March 31st 2020 for Spine 1022 from 1991, uh, the director is Barbara Streisand, and the film is The Prince of Tides. Now, what we have here is uh, cover art based on the original theatrical poster. I think the font is a little bit different, uh, but the picture and the, the layout of the pictures, I think, is, is very similar to the, the poster art. I remember this when it was released, and in fact, uh, I actually uh, saw it uh, in the theater when it was released. Uh, I was actually quite young. I think I was a little bit too young to appreciate everything that was going on in the film. And it, I don't know if it was the most appropriate film for me to watch at that particular time in my life. However, I do admire this film and its strengths. And it's uh, I, I've read the work by Pat Conroy uh, once. I haven't read it in a long time, actually. but. I do remember reading it in college, um, and uh, I, I, I found it very moving. And I actually find this film as well quite moving. And although it's an adaptation of that work, I do also appreciate that it the film is its own entity, its own living entity, and it has its own character, uh, undeniably so, which is also in its form and its content very, very moving. So. I, I think this is one to to uh, um, this is one to look out for. Um, I, I would admit that it might not be a film that is necessarily for everyone, uh, but there, then again, I think there are uh, few films in this world that are. So 
Uh, I don't think it necessarily has to be. Uh, but it does have an undeniable character, uh, the film character. And it does have a, a very uh, meaty and weighty performance by Nick Nolte. I think this is really uh, one of his, his great performances. And he has a, a certain level of, of sensitivity, vulnerability, and volatility that has a, 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 a uniquely human combination when performed by Nick Nolte. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, it, I think, is that, that's the whole key of the film is his performance and his reactions to certain events of the story and, and his interactions with other important key characters as well. But uh, his performance, I think, grounds this film and gives it a, a real emotional uh, triumphant tone that makes this film, I think, uh, quite worthy in the Criterion Collection. So this is The Prince of Tides. And uh, let's talk about the the film itself and the, the director-approved special edition features. So we have new 4 digital restoration supervised by director Streisand with 2.0 surround DTS HD master audio soundtrack on the Blu-ray. So again, uh, new 4K digital restoration. Uh, it, uh, this is great, and I think this is a good selling point for anyone who is very keen on high quality video and audio uh, presentations on current releases. So this is something that we should keep an eye out for. It, it's potentially uh, very good indeed. Then there is an audio commentary featuring Streisand recorded in 1991 and updated in 2019. Now, it's not clear exactly where this is coming from, but my guess is that this commentary track is coming from the Criterion Collection Laserdisc that was made with respect to this film. I don't know if you know this, but this film actually was released by Criterion on a Laserdisc back in the day, and here it is. This is Laserdisc spine number 227. Um, I don't want to get into too many details about it now, but this is actually one of the one of the most peculiar releases of the Criterion Collection Laserdisc history in that this was also released, or it had been planned to be released earlier in the Criterion Collection catalog, and in fact had been produced and manufactured, and I have one copy right here, but it had never been actually released onto the, the, the market, and so these weren't ever put on the on sale as far as I understand it, but the official release was then made much later with this, which is the so-called official release of this. Now, there have been, uh, it's interesting to try to compare these two, um, the sort of the non-released version versus the officially released version, both from Criterion. They both have uh, an audio sound, um, an audio commentary track, and my sense also therefore is that the audio commentary track that says is by Streisand from 1991 is likely going to be the same audio soundtrack that the audio commentary track that we saw from these earlier Criterion Laserdiscs. And it says also updated in 2019. I should say that the commentary track is it's very good in terms of its content but it does have a kind of 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 um, uh, editing style that I think we're not necessarily used to uh, compared to modern day commentary tracks. So it pro this probably means that Criterion might have done a little bit of editing in order to finesse it, to make it seem like a, a typical commentary track uh, that we can find on on modern day Blu-ray releases. That That's my sense. So, uh, But again, I can't be sure and we should take a look at this when the actual Blu-ray arrives in March. Then there is a making of featurette from 1991, and I'm not sure, it doesn't really say, but there is a making of featurette on this uh, Laserdisc and also here as well. So it could be the same uh, documentary, I'm not sure. We'll have to take a look at that as well. Then there is um, an excerpt from a 2018 interview with Streisand conducted by filmmaker Robert Rodriguez on El Rey Network's The Director's Chair. So uh, this is 
obviously much more recent, so uh, that's uh, very good indeed. I haven't seen this, so this will be very interesting to, to watch. Plus, there's audition and rehearsal footage, deleted scenes and alternate takes, costume and makeup tests, alternate end credits with vocal performance by Streisand, behind-the-scenes footage, gag reel, production stills gallery, and other archival materials. This all sounds like stuff that we have on the earlier Criterion Laserdiscs, but once again, there isn't really that much in terms of specific descriptive detail. And so I'm going to have to check this when the Blu-ray comes in March, just to be absolutely sure. But my sense is this is likely going to be stuff taken from the earlier Criterion Laserdiscs, either in whole or at the very least in large part. Then there is an interview with Arthur Pat Conroy from uh, a 1992 episode of Cinema Showcase. And then there's an interview with Streisand from a 1992 episode of the British television show uh, Aspel and Company with My Michael Aspel. And then trailers, plus an essay by film historian B Bruce Eder. Now this is very interesting. You know, the, the earlier non-released Criterion Laserdisc actually had an essay by Joseph McBride and it's, it's back here. And then one of the things that changed when you had the actual official release uh, some years later was the essay. The essay was in fact wholly replaced by a new essay written by Bruce Eater. Now my assumption is that the essay by Bruce Eater that's going to be included with the Blu-ray will be this exact essay that was included on the back of the official release of the Criterion Laserdisc way back in the day, not the Joseph McBride essay. I have no way of verifying this, but this is just a little bit of speculative trivia. Um, one of my guesses is that one of the reasons why I think the earlier D, uh, Laserdisc had been uh, disapproved of uh, Streisand, uh, at least that's the legend, is that I think it has to do with the essay. I think the Bruce Eater essay that ended up on the final release is a little bit more positive about the film. Not to say that the Joseph McBride essay is any way negative, but there are certain turns of phrase perhaps that might be interpreted as being not wholly positive on the film, at least as much as the Bruce Eater essay is. Uh, but that's uh, a whole nother discussion for a whole different video. In any event, my friends, it seems like the Bruce Eater essay that will be included with the Blu-ray is going to be the same essay that we saw on the official Criterion Laserdisc release way back in the day. Uh, but once again, I have to double check this once the Blu-ray arrives. So there we have the uh, a quick rundown of what's being offered with this film, The Prince of Tides in the Criterion Collection. And I should say that you know, I, I, while I wouldn't necessarily call it the you know my most absolute favorite film of all time, I would still say that I think it's a, a, quite a, 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 a good work and it's one that I say, I, as I said before, it's anchored by uh, many of the great stylistic choices by uh, the artist uh, Barbara Streisand, of course, who also features in the film itself in a very key role. But it's also anchored uh, quite remarkably by the great, great performance by Nick Nolte. And uh, I, I think there is, uh, he, he gives so much nuance and charge to his performance. And, and there's a lot of, of uncertainty as well. And it, it's really almost heartbreaking to see his character and the, the, the ordeals that he has to go through. Uh, in order to achieve the goal in the film. So uh, this is, uh, I think, one that will uh, be uh, really welcome uh, in the Criterion Collection. And also, of course, in terms of the Criterion Laserdisc history, it's nice to see this film back in the collection. So this is Spine 1022, The Prince of Tides. So that's it, my friends. And so what do you think? Uh, I would love to hear what it is you have to say. Please let me know in the comment section below and uh, it'll be great to hear. Are you excited about this month? Are you maybe not so excited? Are you somewhere in between? Uh, whatever the case may be, my friends, I would love to hear it. So until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. So until we meet again, my friends, cheers and take care.